Notion is like Lego for software. This is a slide from their original pitch deck from 2013. And this is a slide from their last all hands meeting talking about sticking to your vision. And it is a really good analogy. And this Lego approach to design just makes Notion probably one of the most flexible tools out there because you can build basically anything that you want. A wiki, possible. A portfolio, also possible. By the way, there is a portfolio template for free available in the description for your design portfolio, just saying. A task management tool, also possible. Or just a simple to-do list for yourself. You can use Notion for this as well. And you can do it with relatively not that many elements. There are some headers, some text elements, maybe a couple of layouts like Kanban board or calendar, and you're good to go for the most part. And this actually proves my point that UI design is just texts, rectangles, and circles when you really think hard about it. And with the flexible design also comes a really decent level of customization. So you can decide what kind of block, Lego block you want to use, what color it should be, what kind of image you want printed on it. But you can also decide if you want to put it next to another block, below another block, or maybe within another block. So super interesting design concept which if you're a designer, you know that it is probably a nightmare to design for. So thanks Notion for putting all the effort into foreseeing use cases, serving edge cases, and not blocking certain use cases. And another benefit from obsessing over flexibility is that Notion can grow with you. So you can use it yourself, with your team, or with a huge company, and it will work perfectly fine for all of those. So no wonder that as of last year, Notion has around 100 million users. Welcome to another video from Design Like series, where we analyze design of great companies to find out if we can learn something and implement those things in our design. And previously I did Apple and Instagram. So you may want to check out those videos after this one as well. And another thing that Notion does extremely well is providing good defaults. Without it, I think the Lego model wouldn't work this well because leaving an, ex an unexperienced user with all the building blocks and a blank slate is really dangerous. It would be like opening Photoshop around 10 years ago before they did all the onboarding paths and all the tutorials. I mean, you're like, okay, a lot of cool icons and buttons, but where do I even start? So when creating a new workspace, they give you a couple of documents to get you started with. They make an educated guess on what are the popular templates that people may come to Notion for, and they give you those. So you have like a space to play around with elements and potentially edit those documents. And then when you're ready, you can either use another template and adjust to your needs, or you can even start with like a blank document and build from building blocks from scratch. And there is a term for it called progressive disclosure. So you show more product and more functionality as people explore the product. And this is exactly what Notion does, because imagine if it was the opposite. So let's say that you start with Notion and they ask you, what do you want to create? You don't know. So you choose something and they show you all of the elements that they have. Plus they tell you about workspaces, collaboration, and that you can even sell your own templates. It would be so overwhelming. But the reality is that so many companies onboard their users this way right now. It's like a classical classic mistake. So let's keep in mind good, no, good lessons that Notion gave us. And when we're planning our onboardings in our products, let's stick to like good templates, good basics and pro progressive disclosure. And this progressive disclosure strategy also makes the tool good for all types of users. So your mom can use it for a simple to-do list or an intermediate user can use it for organizing tasks for their team or someone who is super advanced can set up the whole database for a company with a lot of customizations and custom views for their users. And it will all make sense on different levels of advance of advancement of how users are advanced. <laughs> And moving on to the next topic, Notion design is very neutral. It is very focused on user generated content. The whole branding is really black and white, very paper like, and even illustrations are in this vibe. So, which by the way, I'm really like a fan of, especially this new thing that they did by introducing the avatar generator. It really shows how flexible the illustration system is. And also that Notion is for everyone. I really like the message behind it. 
coming back to the app UI, everything that you create as a user is in the center of attention. It is exactly the same philosophy that Instagram has. So they have very neutral text colors, backgrounds, some maybe gray elements, and it is the same here for Notion. And at the same time, it is quite customizable here in this case, because you can add color to your Notion documents and even add a little bit of branding. So the base is neutral, but you can make some adjustments. And why it is also important is that it contributes nicely to this philosophy of Lego, of flexibility, because we know that by default, just with Notion, there will be a lot of user-generated content and in general, a lot of content. So very bold branding and huge colorful elements that are calling attention would not be the best choice. This neutral way is just a better way in this case. And I've been thinking about this relationship between how much content there is in the app and how neutral the interface should be. And I think the more content, the more neutral. So for example, you take a look at apps like Notion, Instagram, Medium for blogs. There's a lot of content there, a lot of user-generated content and design is super neutral, black and white basically. But in the apps where there is not so much content, like for example, food tracker, habit tracker, maybe breathing apps or meditation app, they can go a little bit crazier with their branding and they should because otherwise the experience would be really boring. So here you have it. We have a system to think about how neutral design should be. Another thing that Notion really doubles down on is making collaboration as smooth as possible. And I remember a long, long time ago, I first tried the collaboration tool, so co-editing in Notion, where you can see and edit together with other people. And I was blown away with how smooth and how seamless it was and how little delay there was. Because even today, other tools, like even Google Docs, well, no, Google Docs are quite good, but Paper, for example, from Dropbox, not so smooth. It's, it's like some kind of delay and Notion is great. They can indicate where people are and what they are editing. So they are really doubling down on this experience. And back then when I was experiencing it for the first time, it wasn't obvious. It was like a new thing and really impressive. So in Notion, commenting experience is good. Notifications are decent. The collaboration tools are great. So they do it so that they reduce the reasons why you would potentially go and use another tool in addition to Notion. I can't tell you how many conversations I had in the past when we were looking for a tool where to use like our running doc or maybe the um, planning our design work or creating a wiki and we always explore different options so different external tools and we come back to notion eventually in 99 percent of cases because we're already paying for it we're already there and we all and notion actually serves the purpose really well so I, it's all well planned the collaboration aspect is also co contributing nicely to this lego model and the flexibility model it all just works together really well and before we close, let's talk about limiting flexibility. So we were talking about how flexible Notion is, but they don't allow you to change every single thing. So for example, text sizes, you cannot change them. You cannot change fonts and you cannot really go that crazy with the layout. And I think it's on purpose because those safety bars are needed in a tool like this. There are some safety bars so people don't go totally crazy and it makes the the tool a little bit more more foolproof and also it makes it so that the document created in notion it looks like it's created in notion and it's also really good from the branding perspective because if someone shares a document with you or you're looking at the database that they're working with you can tell it's notion you can definitely tell so for example an opposite approach would be webflow you cannot say that a web that a website was built in webflow if there is no like made in webflow button only from looking at it, but it was not, it was never, of course, an objective for Webflow to be like this, but you can say that those are very different approaches to design. There is a spectrum there. And it is really clever. And I suppose it was quite hard to draw the line between those things are customizable, we are allowing people to play around versus things that we need to stay and keep fixed. So that tool is quite foolproof and Maybe we are protecting users from themselves, the users who wouldn't make the best visual decisions, because if you really want to look at it, it's so hard to make Notion Doc look not acceptable. For the most part, it will be visually decent at least. If you liked this video, check out the design like series. I did Apple and Instagram so far, but there are more to come. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.